This video will describe uh, granite addition to carbonyls. And so let's talk about what we're going to learn. First of all, we're going to learn how granite reagents add to um, aldehydes or ketones, uh, as well as how they add to esters. Uh, we're also going to learn when they add to the carbonyl, we're going to learn about the intermediate or the tetrahedral intermediate that's common to both uh, addition reactions to aldehydes or ketones or esters. And then we're going to talk a bit, little bit about retrosynthesis, meaning going from the product, either alcohol or ketone, uh, to the reactants, either ketone, aldehyde, or ester. All right, so let's look at this little example. Uh, we have an aldehyde um, here. We have a Grignard reagent here. And then we're going to quench this by adding some acid, just HX. does not matter what the acid is. If I take an aldehyde and treat it with a Grignard, followed by addition of HX I get an alcohol right and then the counter ion from the acid just comes here and now that's with magnesium okay let's look at the what the intermediate looks like so from after the first step so this plus the Grignard I get this tetrahedral intermediate where the Grignard adds in to the carbonyl carbon and then the pi bond is broken so I have a, a, a negatively charged oxygen here and then the magnesium simply comes here as just an ionic attraction so this is what we call a tetrahedral intermediate anytime I add a granule to a carbonyl I'm going to go through this type of tetrahedral intermediate if I have an aldehyde or a ketone as my starting material both of them go through this intermediate this is very important for later on in the video so make sure you understand what it what this means okay if I have an ester if I treat an ester with an uh, with the Grignard, the product is a ketone, and then the alkoxide part or the OCH3 part of the ester is now here with magnesium bromide, so that becomes a counter ion over here. All right, so let's look at this again. It's the it's a similar type of tetrahedral intermediate where the OCH3 group is here. The methyl group from the Grignard has added in, broken the pi bond, and then magnesium bromide is here as a counter ion right again esters also go through this tetrahedral intermediate um, the difference is they don't get undergo proton transfer which we'll talk about in a second but they actually eliminate to get rid of the OCH3 group uh, in order to remember this I, I think this mnemonic might help think of two African brothers one's name is Gaka the other's name is Geek right sounds silly but it'll help you remember Gaka means this a granular plus an aldehyde or ketone equals an alcohol and then geek means this Grignard plus ester equals ketone if you remember those two terms when you see the, the reagents you'll be able to predict the products with no problem so let's look again at how this thing works and I, I thought I'd jazz this up a bit so just bear with me here through these two mechanisms So here's my product alcohol. Let's see how it happened. The Grignard attacks the carbonyl. The electrons in the carbon magnesium bond come here and attack the carbonyl carbon. I break the pi bond, right? And I generate my tetrahedral intermediate. This intermediate then gets protonated in the second step when I add HX so that the uh, proton from the acid here is now uh, bonded to my oxygen to create the alcohol. All right, let's look at another mechanism.
here, similar type mechanism. The grenier comes in, these electrons in the carbon magnesium bond attack the carbonyl. Of course, those electrons are going to be polarized towards carbon because of the nature of this bond. So the, these electrons come here, right? I break the pi bond, those electrons go into oxygen, so I'm here at my tetrahedral intermediate. In the intermediate, this is the difference between this reaction and reacting with uh, the ketone or the aldehyde is this the second step I don't have proton transfer what I have is elimination the electrons from oxygen come here to reform my pi bond and then the electrons between carbon and oxygen here this bond breaks and those electrons leave with the alkoxide or the OCH3 group notice it says I'll leave but not without my electrons so in the product what I have is a ketone and then the OCH3 here and the MGBR from here combine here to make a salt in the product. 